Naira Quintana today announced that he won't be writing for Arkea Samsic after 2022. The team then communicated uh, as well the same to that effect. Whether you're just starting out on your cycling journey or are looking for those final tune-ups ahead of a big event or race, Zwift is the online cycling platform that makes things fun. There are nine different worlds, thousands of kilometers of virtual road, including replicas of real-world climbs like Alp de Zwift. There's workouts, training plans, events and races for every level of rider. The massive community means you're never alone. So if you want to find out more about Zwift or indeed to start your free seven-day trial, head to Zwift.com down below. This is after, of course, his uh, the annulment of his Tour de France results for two tramadol positive cases on the Planche de Belfia and the Grenoble stages 7 and 11 which is not just to reiterate is not an anti-doping violation it is just a UCI rule that you can't take tramadol in competition and so there was no suspension there's no anti-doping rule violation And yet his contract, which two days before the finding was announced by the UCI, it was announced two days before that there was a three-year extension between Quintana and Arkea. And so the curious part here is what happened? Because I don't think you can legally rip up a contract, not the ones I've seen for something that's not an anti-doping rule violation, at least it's a grey area and you could get fought on it. So there's a rumour that it was a verbal agreement and so they've just reneged Arkea on Nairo. And like, what do you think's happened, Benji? Do you think they just they just ripped it up or they just both mutually agreed it's not happening? Well, obviously, I don't know the behind the scenes, but I agree that it's more likely to be a verbal agreement that was ripped up afterwards. I will note that the perfect translation of the Arkea message that mentions the non-renewal of Nairo Quintana, which, in my opinion, doesn't necessarily declare that Arkea was the one that rips it up, but that's the initial thought of it, you know, because Arkea has this way of, like, communicating with the outside world on their Twitter where they give such non-transparent communication, but it's low-key understandable considering the topic. Every single press communique I've seen recently of them says, but we won't talk further on the topic. And the problem with that is that, one, you don't know the actual stuff that happens, so the people will start filling up the gaps themselves, and then you will get stories that might not be the true story become the all-around narrative. And maybe that verbal agreement narrative is incorrect, but that's what they get for not communicating it properly. That's what they get for not letting the story come out. Perhaps they have an agreement where they won't communicate it, like they have some NDA about it. Is that a possibility like the Hirschi one? Yeah, that's possible. But I mean, if they had a verbal agreement, price agreed, years agreed, and it's being announced on the team's Twitter and his agent who, according to First Cycling's Aquadro, didn't have that signed (laughs) and the T's crossed, then, man, that is a fuck-up of monumental um, scale to not get it. Like, how does it get announced if it's not actually signed? Like, maybe I'm just a bookish lawyer still who likes things to be signed (laughs) and I don't (laughs) trust people. But even so, like... If it is so agreed to the point where you're announcing it, it's still agreed. Like you have an agreement and, yeah, obviously Arkea, like presumably, presumably from the Nairo side, why would he want to rip up a, a three-year contract? So it must be the team, one would think, not wanting to continue. Um, you know, French team, NPCC, you know, that's their position on it. Um the reason they're going into World Tour, a big part, Naira Quintana's points uh, throughout the last few years. Of course, they lost the 400 from the Tour, but they won't be having his points in the future. Um, 
And yeah, it also means probably Anacona and Flores and some other Dia Quintana won't be on Arkea either, one would think. Yeah, I don't think Dyer Quintana is the biggest loss in the world, to be honest. But all in all, he was still like, ah, he's still that man that you put in a hotel room together with Nairo Quintana, just in case some people knock on the door in the middle of the night so that Quintana doesn't get arrested in Australia. That's why Dyer Quintana exists to go to jail instead of Nairo. (laughs) It actually is. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) exactly. (laughs) But uh, on on a serious note, there is some questioning when it comes to this team, when it comes to the future, they're going into World Tour now. They have not announced too many signings. They've got very limited riders actually announced for 2023. They probably have more signed than they are sharing with the public. But Quintana being a rider outside of that is one spare point of the team that is gone. What their future has for them, I don't know, because we need to know more about their potential transfers. I think Sean Poussin was a rumored name, for example. Yeah, I don't know if gone, you actually... Yeah. Okay, Sean Poussin is one of the riders, but he's not the Nairo Quintana of the world when it comes to what he could bring to that team. I will note one more thing about Tramadol for a second. I read somewhere on Reuters recently that Tramadol is being added to the WADA ban list yeah. in the future. So that's a change that's upcoming. I don't know what the period is at which that will go into effect, but that's something you can know from this point onwards that, let's say, a uh, rider in Whenever that's active, let's say a rider has that happen again, then it's an actual doping offense. But for now, it's not. And the question now is, well, what happens with Nairo? He's contesting it (laughs) in Cass, which I think is a... I know you can't tell a man what to do about his reputation. and And if he hasn't taken it and believes he hasn't taken it, then you have to fight it. But I'll say the prospects of success... Probably, I don't know, depends on the test. I don't know the test ins and outs, but it's a lot of hassle to go through, particularly if the contract, you're never getting it back for something that is not an anti-doping rule violation. Um, It's just a disqualification in a particular event. That being said, and, and that CAS appeal, will that be resolved quick enough for him to get a contract easier next year probably not he's going to have to be talking to teams now if he wants to continue so that's the question and and would a team that he's signing for say listen no just put that to bed put it behind you because if you do the cast appeal then you lose the cast appeal the news cycle goes again about it and it reminds everybody um but of course you know he has his right to appeal if he thinks he can win and didn't do it uh, where do you think he goes, if anywhere, Benji? Who needs Nara Quintana? Presumably, I love riders on discount. I love riders. <laughs> um, I would have signed Lopez as soon as he got in the Movistar car. That would have been me on the phone to him as he's getting in the car. I would have I guess said, get your wife off line one. I'm on line two. Lopez, let's talk for 2022. Uh, I think Vina Kurov literally did do that. Um, so who do you think is interested in Nara Quintana? I think Vino Kurov is one of the people that might be intrigued by this. I think uh, a companionship with Miguel Angel Lopez would be pretty funny with the two Colombians in the attack. But I think another team that might be intrigued are the ones that need points. And I'm looking at a BNB with a bag of money in their hands. Is that a team that would be intrigued by that? I don't know if they're in the MPCC. I don't know if that would influence their signing policy. But regardless of that for a second... That's a team that needs points based on their goals, which haven't been said publicly, but I'm guessing that they want to step up as quickly as possible to World Tour based on the fact that they've got a rumored 19 million in their pocket. So if that's indeed the case, then a Quintana could go to a team like that. Are there other teams where you're like, oh, this fits that? Yeah, Total and BNB. Total, you know, they really should be trying to make world tour and there's no better time to pick up points than in February at the start of the three-year cycle in Tour de la Provence and Tour de la Maritima du Var with Naira Quintana, which these they go to the same races RK go to. And now you get to get him to go all the same races on probably a third of the salary. So win for Total, put him on specialised, away you go. They're an option. Uh, UA, of course, are, <laughs> are always an option. Although I think, didn't Nairo turn down their interest 
to re-sign with Arkea. I thought they were interested in him and he turned them down. Um, but maybe like they took Hirschi after the DSM um, sort of issues. So UAE is an option for him. Uh, Group Armour won't touch him. Profitus probably won't touch him. Um, Bahrain, they <laughs> with Lander, probably... nah. I mean, Quickstep. <laughs> <laughs> who Quickstep is full, I think. Um, yeah, but I don't see him at Quickstep. I don't see Quintana riding at Quickstep. It's just a no go for me. <laughs> it just, it just wouldn't work. It just, yeah, and like he probably expects his entourage to get signed or parts of it, like Dyer to get signed. And Quickstep, <laughs> like, no, nah, we're not doing that. Ineos not happening. Intermarche full probably. Uh, I would say Movistar is a really good fit. Um, Valverde's <laughs> retired. It is though. Again, like, back to Movistar. <laughs> obviously, you don't send him to the same races as Mars. Um, yeah. You send him to you split him with the Giro Tour or whatever, or maybe they can both do the Vuelta. But like next year, they have Mars. Jorgensen, I like, but the TT what setup's if- too bad for him. What if the Rodriguez signing is right for 2024? What is what if Carlos Rodriguez is actually joining this team in 2024? And I think were there no other rumors that someone else was joining Ruben Guerrero or something to Movistar? Ah, like- uh, Guerrero, that's true. Then we're thinking about overpaying him for three years. Yeah, <laughs> mm, it's true. If they're doing Guerrero, then they probably won't do Quintana because Guerrero is available now. I mean, I would sign Quintana plus Movistar. They need points. They need more GC contenders. This is a GC team. It's not a classics team. It doesn't really have any bunch sprinters. They're not even really good in one-day races. <laughs> this is a grand tour stage racing team, and they have one GC contender right now, Enric Mas, who's very good, but you need more than one. You need three. You need four guys who can at least top 10 grand tours, and so... Uh, bring back Nairo, I say, and tell him he, he can't bring his entourage. Your new domestics, Matteo Jorgensen. I swear there was another rumor that Gaviria was joining Movistar. Gaviria, Quintana, Guerrero <laughs> all joined <laughs> Movistar in one year. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I think Movistar got a lot of issues uh, <laughs> still, even though they've saved themselves from relegation. Um but yeah, Gaviria, I think, is a great pickup too if they do sign him because you need a bunch of sprinter. Otherwise, you can't compete in like 40% of cycling races on the UCI yeah. World Tour calendar, uh, particularly in stage races. So they got Cantor. He, he's not really broken through. He's had a lot of opportunities. They've got Garcia Cortina. He's not really a pure bunch of sprinter. I think if you get those... I think they can form some sort of lead out for Gaviria. It's not going to be... For Aramburu. Yeah. For Aramburu or he's going to be the last man? Gaviria is going to lead out Aramburu. Of course. Like, <laughs> we got to see the priorities is better than Tim here, okay? Gaviria is a better okay. sprinter than Tim Lillier. Like, not close. In his prime, yes, but not no, now. No, no, right now. Better. I don't fucking believe it. Mate, how many mechanicals has Tim Lillier faked in, grand, in stage races <laughs> the last... Two years. How many? It's at least four. <laughs> like the guy okay, cannot got, position yeah. himself. He's he cannot compete in a sprint outside of the first three stages. Like once they go, they, I'm, I'm not joking. I, I think Gaviria is better. Gaviria. Like look at Christoph from UAE to Intermarche, and Gaviria is. His lead outs have been not great a lot, a lot of the time and he positions himself well. I think, of course, side by side, 100 meters, Melia is going to beat him, but that's not all sprinting. Yeah. And Gaviria True. climbs better. So I think he's better. I can't say much more about Gaviria. Of course, <laughs> Melia on quick step is going to win so many races. That doesn't change my opinion. Like, and Gaviria is going to be on Movistar getting let out by Ivan Sosa. So that's not going to make, make his life easy, <laughs> is it? Um, but I still think. Give you a little bit underrated uh, at the moment. But yeah, that's the news. Where do you think Quintana, hand on heart, where do you think he ends up? China Glory. That's that's not a bad call. <laughs> China Glory or Yolo Cometa uh, could be. Fuck you. What? Contale, they need Contale a Giro GC him. leader. 
<laughs> would be pretty funny if Consolor signs him Spanish. and Fortunato. Well, they show Fortunato all the time, so he wouldn't miss the attack from Quintana from his wheel. So, yeah, that's a win. Yeah, B and B is a good call. Yeah. Anyway, we'll see what happens with that. Where Quintana goes, he came sixth in the tour before the Tramadol uh, annulment. He was looking pretty good for a lot of the year. Like okay, um, but yeah, he's not going to be on Arkea for the next couple of years. 